Guys, before you watch this video, click on the link below. My new book, Ripped at 50, A Journey to Self-Love is out now. I've spent the last 31 years amassing this information. It has the nine pillars of health that apply to all human beings. Okay, here we go. Hey, Troy Casey, Certified Health Knot here at CHNHQ in Santa Monica, California during the wonderful coronavirus nothing burger pandemic. And so, um, yeah, interesting times. So in an effort to bring you guys more health and healing information and kind of my own path to healing, I'm bringing on my friend Grace. Grace and I connected over social media and uh, he's a shamanic practitioner that doesn't necessarily use plant medicines. Maybe, maybe you do, but he didn't use it with me. He used his shamanic uh, knowledge uh, to work with me remotely. And so I wanted to have, uh, bring him on and explain uh, how he works because I was very resonant with his work uh, and I saw great results very subtle energies, some fine tuning that I've been working on with my own self-sabotage, with, um, with my own anger patterns um, and my relationship with my wife. And so when he came in my crosshairs through the social media, I connected with him, I resonated with him. We did some work together. Uh, I saw the results and so I wanted to share. Thank you, Grace, for coming on and uh, why don't, why don't we share, you know, where, where you're from, where you're at, and a little bit about your journey. Sure. Thank you. I, um, it's such an honor that uh, we've been able to work together and that you're including me now um, to, you know, make a little bit more of a public presence. Um, I started my journey doing the shamanic work um, maybe eight or nine years ago, and it really started with the Don Miguel Ruiz material. A lot of people are familiar with Don Miguel Ruiz. Uh, he wrote the Four Agreements, the Five Agreements, the Mastery of Love, and I read those all those books. And then at the time, I was in the middle of a very, um, I would say, abusive relationship for for me. Um, and because I was experiencing that that abuse in the relationship, it drove me to look for a solution. And I had. Um, got a hold of this material and just reading it, it it like planted a seed and then i was able to unwind that relationship and i realized that that relationship um and the abuse i was uh, suffering in that relationship was actually a mirror and a reflection of how i felt about myself and that was a big epiphany for me and so i went i i went to work on the inner journey and as soon as I committed to that journey, then, of course, spirit always shows up with additional resources and teachers. And through a couple years of doing basically my personal purification work uh, outside of a relationship, I realized that partnership uh, for my path, partnership being involved in a, a partnership that's itself a, a container or a vessel of doing the spiritual work, was gonna be the fastest way for me to gain the insights into my own personal unconscious and in my own um, self-love journey. So I um, met my wife online, actually. Uh, she was on uh, the East Coast, I was on the West Coast, and she was a practitioner, had been for many years already in a Peruvian tradition of the high Andes mountains and had been to Peru and trained there. And she, um, she, when she told me about her tradition and practices, I had, all, I basically was like, this is what I've been looking for. Because what, Do, what the Don Miguel Ruiz information and the, the intuitive messages, and basically I had some, a bit of a Buddhist uh, tradition, I had been going to meditation and I've been doing some yoga, kind of like a lot of spiritual dabbling. Um, when I met my wife and she explained to me the, the very clear steps in the shamanic tradition of Peru and the medicine wheel, and she told me what she did for her clients, 
I had already experienced many of the things that she was talking about that people experience early in their journey, like the clearing of heavy energies, the um, just getting in touch with these deep emotions, the grief, the pain, um, experiencing a disillusionment of, of your current life. Um, I basically, when I got on this path, all my friends, um, how I related to the world, my work, everything started to look very different to me because um, that er, that life that I had, that where I was experiencing a, a degree of suffering that fi that drove me to seek a, tr a true path, um, was being dissolved around me, and so that is a process that is part of this this initiation that we're all going through collectively right now, and so. Um, Getting involved with my wife set me uh, again to train in that tradition and go through the medicine wheel. And after spending many years now, about five years with my wife working in that tradition and having gone to, back to Peru and basically completing um, a level of work, there's never a total completion, right? Because we're always going through initiation. Initiations don't stop. It's a, it's a you know, all the way to the eighth dimension you know all the way to the sun we are bringing in more light and so but i did get to a point in my personal journey and and spirit basically tapped me on the shoulder and said what you have been able to do thus far in your personal journey you need to now share and work with other people and i really had no interest in becoming a shamanic practitioner i personally um was driven to do the work out of a deep desire to transform my own life and to experience more love. Mm -hmm. And um, I just was like, people are on their own journey, that's fine. I, I'm here to do my journey. And so um, many things kind of came along in that five years and it really deeply transformed the way that I operate and the way that my life looks. And it's a, a massive transformation, it's so beautiful. But when you experience that level of transformation, you um, want to share that love and beauty with other people. So Spirit tapped me and my wife uh, being an amazing practitioner herself and been doing this now for 15 years, 14, 15 years, she quickly trained me in the hands-on practical techniques of the energy work. So up until recently, I hadn't learned any of the techniques as far as working on other people. I had, I had learned all these techniques through my own personal journey working on myself and then spirit tapped me just last summer basically when i got back from peru to start this practice and work with other people so the work that i do with folks and the reason it works um, from a distance is because we work in our tradition with the pure energy body the light body of our clients and that light body is not um, a localized thing it actually exists in the infinite field and so I can track my clients and like we did, we, we tracked, because um, my, my wife also helped with, with the tracking on, on you. Um, so I say we, but uh, we tracked, we get information from your light body. We write notes, you know, I scribble notes um, on everything. I get a download from your light body on what, what critical pieces of information that you or the client can use to help them transform in their personal life and continue on their journey. Um, and often that shows up in um, some deep childhood patterning, uh, some traumas. Um, uh, sometimes there's some past life stuff in there. There's often contracts, um, things we call uh, curses, um, which is a, essentially an ancestral patterning that shows up as, as a way that keeps sabotaging your life um, you'll understand it as like almost a habitual repetition of uh, a certain relationship or a certain pattern that keeps coming back and it's, it's happening because of this unconscious energy and that exists as an energy inside you and, sh and sh with the energy work we can actually remove some of these energies so that the client can move forward. Um, often we, we can do entity extractions so some folks have a an external possession. They've been exposed to some very negative stuff. Um, and sometimes we have th things that we call an internal possession, which is um, basically a trauma or a, or a belief. Uh, I, I like this better, a belief system that is in, in our operating system unconsciously that has taken on a life of its own. 
And because it's been fed with our emotions and it's been fed with our um, energy, that belief system operates almost like a, a like an entity within us, um, kind of creating a lot of havoc and drama. And we can remove that energetically. So there's a lot of different interventions and um, and there's a lot of things that we do. We bring stuff down from the upper world. Um, so for certain individuals, I will get messages about what gifts and upper world connections are waiting for them. And I'll bring those down and, and install that into the light body. And so this doesn't need to take place um, you know, in an office visit. It simply can be done uh, distance work. And what I usually see is that by changing these energies, removing the energies, adding in the new light energies, um, spinning up the chakras, working on the chakras, that that energetic boost will then um, help a person get um, farther in their path, right? It will keep, it'll keep them going um, and allow them to have new awarenesses. It'll allow them to have a, basically an epiphany, a transformation and a catharsis with the emotions that are wrapped up in these things. And um, when, you, when you experience a transformation of something you've been working on for a long time, it's ultimately, it's beautiful and healing and um, it inspires you to continue to go uh, forward on your path, so. Yeah, for me, you know, I've been working on some of my patterns for a very long time. And uh, it was funny that you came into my life. And, um, and I didn't know what to expect. And, uh, I enjoyed the session and I went very deep. I basically went out for like a really good nap and, uh, and I could feel the work and I've been doing enough of this energetic work and I've worked with, um, you know, various shamans of, you know, with plant medicine, et cetera. And so I've been in that state of relaxation, um, that state of healing. And I really felt a shift. The thing with me is, you know, over the years, I've been expecting these like, you know, gigantic, you know, shifts. And actually, what it's been is it's been much more subtle, and it's kind of been chipping away. So I used to, when I was in my 20s, I used to have complete fits, rages, like multiple rages per day. And uh, I still have that potential and that potential, those rages that that has the potential for ruining relationships, sabotaging, you know, anything in its wake. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's, it's warrior type energy. And, uh, and so over the years, I've been able to heal that. I used to heal it with alcohol, right? I used to just drink alcohol until I was just a mushy mess, um, until that got dysfunctional. Uh, or, you know, the anger would rear its ugly head through that, um, either after with hangovers or eventually it would come out. So I had to deal with it. And, and obviously Vipassana meditation is what chipped away at it. The, I would say the most um, sitting, you know, 10 day courses in silence and sitting a couple hours a day for six years straight. Uh, that really chipped away at it uh, at a very, very big level. And then I started working with Maori healers, um, energy healers, and, and really body workers. You know, they can work through the etheric as well, like you do. Um, but, you know, I watch them work physically with people. They worked on me many times. And, uh, and then, of course, working with uh, the plant medicine from the Amazon, not only the, the ayahuasca, but also the, the herbs from the Amazon, the plants, and taking them into my body regularly to raise my frequency and vibration. And so, but I still had those, those, those challenges. I still have them in me, right? You know, uh, they've just gotten lesser and less. I get to laugh at it now when it, when it rears its head. Um, and I'm working closely with my wife since we got divorced and then remarried. Um, when I get triggered, she gets triggered. So my stuff triggers her stuff. Um, and then we go into this pattern. And, you know, we were, we just got remarried. And after the honeymoon period dissipated, uh, we found ourselves back at the same patterns. And so working with you, and I know you've worked with Yuri as well. I noticed another big layer of it chipped away at me. I really felt that. Um, and then, um, and then we just worked again recently 
uh, on another layer and we're still in the middle of your tutelage with me because I got to do one more ceremony for the particular work that we've done. So maybe you could share with the people, you know, I don't have a problem sharing my, my, my healing process, a little bit of what you saw in, in the patterns with me. And also if you could define your definition of shamanism, I use the definition that was taught to me in the Amazon uh, shaman is the definition who walks between both worlds, the spirit world and the material mm -hmm. world. I like that, yeah. And so, um, yeah, just a little bit about how you define that and then w what you saw uh, with me. Yeah, the, the shaman is, uh, it's, um, it's defined in almost every culture and tradition has this shaman um, character. It's, uh, you know, it's literally like the fool in the tarot it's the it's the mystic so in christianity there's mystics and saints that come out of that tradition um francis of assisi but you know he's walking in the woods talking with nature that's the shaman right the the individual that is called by the divine to not collude with the third density separated state um conditioning but to but to commune with the divine, with the spirits, with the other dimensions or worlds um, in, a, in, a, in a deep practice so that the being um, involved in that practice can shine more love into this more separated density. And so um, in, in my pr personal practice, I have been drawn to four distinct traditions and by practicing these four traditions, I have, um, it's like, you can kind of see how the, the different traditions talk about very similar things, but just, it's just culturally, they explain it through their own cultural lens or paradigm. And, but studying the, but, you know, basically being mentored in these four different traditions by my different guides and masters has allowed me to overcome the consensual programming that was in me i think faster in many ways um because i saw that it was being shown to me and mirrored back to me in so many different of these traditions that i was like deeply deeply giving myself to and um you know there is a point where you cross over and consensual reality no longer makes any sense to you and you just are completely committed to what spirit is bringing into your life. And, um, you know, I have so many stories about my commitment to that. And, uh, you know, uh, one of the, the time I knew I had really, um, and, and these, it's interesting because the, the uh, guidance from spirit comes in as you are able to transform and trans, um, transcend these different programs and, and dense energies within yourself. So, Every time I was willing to face um, some of my own programming, some of the, the heavy emotions and energies I was carrying, as I sat and faced those emotions, um, I did, didn't turn away from them, but I, I faced the grief, I faced the pain, I faced the pain that I had caused other people, I faced the grief and pain that I had been, uh, that had been basically my childhood. Then spirit was able to bring in new information for me and that information came to me by um, helping me develop deeper um, practices within these four traditions. And so I really see the shaman as a, as a mystic. And then the mystic, the shaman, is able to give back to the community through their personal medicine. And for me, that's through the, I, I, I do consider myself a monk. Um, I practice, it's called Kusamo. It's, a, it's basically a samurai monk, Zen monk practice of walking in nature and playing the flute. And I do martial arts while in nature playing the flute. And that has been a very deep devotional practice that has gotten me through so much of the transformation that I needed to do personally. Because whenever I hit up against these very dark emotions, um, I did not want to allow those emotions anymore to control my life and to blow up relationships that I was having. So when I, when I really, my wife in so many ways was instrumental in, in this process is because when we got married, um, of course, there was a whole new layer and level of depth of 
inner child and pain and drama from my from my childhood that needed to come up and it started to come up and it, and it's and so this practice came to me from spirit spirit literally like gave me some visions and told me to start going out and doing this um and so i was able to t take that emotion that heavy dark emotion and that and that and my need to process that stuff out to the woods i'd walk uh, every day after work and I would play the flute and I would commune with nature and it helped me transmute those heavy emotions and I didn't bring it home and create drama with my wife mm. and so just like my yoga practice uh, and and my yoga practice turned into a music practice where I spirit had me start to get involved in something called Nadi yoga which is a, a musical yoga practice and then a Native American practice came to me, and then a uh, this Peruvian uh, South American practice came to me through my wife. And so, by doing all these different practices, I just gave myself to the medicine work, and as a deeply personal transformative uh, journey. So that's the long way of explaining what I how I think about a shaman. Um, there was a second part to your question, and it, it had to do with what I saw in you and what you were experiencing. And, I, and it's, it's, this is a good story, too, because a friend of mine sent me a video of yours months back, and it was a video, I think it was right after you had first divorced your wife. And you were talking, the, the, the video wasn't about that. The video was about some of these uh, techniques that you practice, and my friend was sending me the video go hey check out what this guy's doing when i watched the video what struck me and why i reached out to you was that i saw um i saw the love and devotion that you had for your family and for your wife and for your spiritual practice and i saw this level of grief in you that you were you were really trying to get into touch with and some of the some of the techniques that you were doing for your health stuff I saw as an expression of this deep grief and longing for spirit kind of being manifested in these different techniques that you train and teach. And so I was, I was looking sort of beyond the techniques and I was trying to tap into what, I was like, this is a brother, <laughs> first of all. I was like, this guy's a warrior. He understands the path of the warrior. And that is that this masculine, um, not gender, it's masculine is not gender specific, but this masculine energy that we're all tapping into is here in service of the divine feminine, the Pachamama, the earth. And so how do we create the, the warrior of love and beauty and peace to walk in peace in this world and, and to use this energy that we have, which is the warrior energy to transform the world ultimately, right, through our personal journey. And so I saw this grief in you and I saw this commitment to warrior of love that's what i call it the warrior of love and so that and spirit kind of like poked me was like poke 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 like get a hold of this guy because i had at that point um uh through just all my trains i was like oh i see some of the things that are going on in you and it's like i got a download on it and so i was like that's why i reached out to you and what when we finally um again uh, in our tradition we don't do a uh what we call tracking on a client until we have permission, mm -hmm. right? But anytime you see anybody, you do just get information that comes through on who they are, what they're all about, you know, and it's just basically a discernment, right? Who, who, who are people that are, you know, I'm aligned with and who are people I just need to kind of leave alone. They're on a different path. And I definitely saw this alignment in you. And I saw this deep devotion to your family and your wife and the grief that you were working with. And, and this also, this energy, I would say it's a, kind of an amped up energy in your nervous system. And so that's what I, you know, that's what I was tracking in our first session. I tracked this energy that had been pretty much interfering with your life up until that point. That was a, it was stuck in your nervous system. And this was a, a little bit, a trauma response from your childhood. And there was some patterning in, in you as well that I saw energetically. And so in our session, it was, you know, it, it was basically the tracking showed me what I needed to go get, first of all. So I went in there and through the shamanic tools and, and practices, um, the hands-on stuff, I was able to like basically remove those energies that had been blocking you for, you know, a long time. And I think clearing those channels and clearing some of the chakras of those energies 
again, it's, as you mentioned, it's a step-by-step -step process. There will be times of a, like a big catharsis or a big moment, and maybe early on in the journey, um, especially if you do a plant medicine and have a big experience and you're like, oh my gosh, yes, spirit is real. And, and we're all unified and I feel the, the plants and the earth and, and it, it helps you commit, right? Because you're like, you feel it so strongly. But after that, it's a slow and steady chipping away at these programs. And the I Ching, which is one of my best guides, the I Ching loves to talk about this slow and steady progress and to not abandon yourself and your journey just because you're experiencing what you perceive from the ego as setbacks or delays or frustrations. And the I Ching is always saying the sage works through a zigzag path. And it does that because the idea is we're unwinding our egos. Our egos want to go shoot straight point A to B, like get me there. I want to be enlightened. Boom. That's the ego. And so the sage is always throwing us off back and forth all around because that's helping us unwind those egoic um, identifications. And so and the, the, the stuff I was tracking in you w was, I think, interfering with your marriage and your relationship. And it was causing these pa this pattern that was you were experiencing sort of in this habitual way that you were inter you know, reacting and relating to your wife. So I just, I was able to like, you know, I think remove some of those energies. Again, it's always up to the client to do the hands on the work. You know, the energy is removed, but you still have to apply your um, consciousness to bring awareness and then um, dissolve the feeding that energy, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I think in our second session, I, uh, we talked about doing some contract work. There was a contract in your, in your underworld so that the shaman, the, the medicine person travels between the worlds. I, I see it as traveling from the underworld, middle world, and upper world. So a lot of the work I do is in the underworld and the shaman becomes a person who can walk in the underworld and see clearly in the underworld because you become intimately familiar with your own underworld, which then allows you to work on behalf of the client in their underworld. And so we, I found a contract in your underworld that was related to uh, uh, some childhood trauma. Again, um, this sense of feeling betrayed by spirit when when we are betrayed by our parents or we have the perception that we're betrayed by our parents because ultimately our soul chooses to be incarnated with a certain parent set up due to karma due to soul lessons to experience certain things and but that forms a deep contract and an impression in us and so that contract those can be removed and rewritten and this is something i learned from don miguel ruiz when i first got introduced to my shamanic journey this idea of contracts that we're creating our reality by agreeing to all this stuff to teach us and that, that we can redo those agreements. So this contract we worked on with you, we removed the old one energetically from your underworld. You, um, I shared with you some ways to then work up your new contract and then do a fire ceremony to activate it. So again, it's the shaman is only, or, or my practice is only to assist the client in their own activation because it's still ultimately you had to activate that contract you had to do the fire ceremony and now you have to bring your awareness to this new energy that you're going to feed and you're going to stop feeding the old energy the the, the work of the energetic interventions that we do allows your consciousness to bring more attention to not feeding the old energies and then putting your attention on feeding the new energy so it's, it's only an assistance in your journey I'm not a healer, but this is a, an aid, a, an aid to your consciousness, your upper, your soul consciousness, meaning um, to, you know, work in the physical through bringing more attention to these things. And so it's, it's simply just a, a, an aid, a, 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 an assistance to your journey or the client's journey. Is this making sense? Yeah. And, and just, you know, to, let the people know, you know, from my perspective, and I've worked with a lot of people over the years, and uh, and I see what's what on the internet. A lot of people contact me as well. I don't resonate with with everyone and everything, and and uh, I really resonated with your work. I enjoyed our sessions. I thought they were extremely profound. Uh, I came back for more. Um, of course, I'm interviewing you for my YouTube channel right now. 
Uh, so I think it's very valuable. And so I think it's, I think it's extremely valuable. Before I let people uh, know where to get a hold of you, uh, I wanted to ask you one other question. But yeah, just to reiterate, um, you know, the, the work that we did together was very subtle. I trust the process. I could feel the energy. Um, and now you're reminding me, you know, that it's a subtle process and it's all about me feeding the energy and I, di I did my fire ceremony and it was all about you know bringing in the new energies this the same prayers that I've been asking for for a very long time but just yeah. really grounding those writing them down and then and then praying with them um, as, as I brought them in, into my life I think just a more concentrated effort uh, if you will and so, so I appreciate that. And I appreciate your wife. I really resonate with her as well. And uh, you guys do really good work. So I just, I, I just want you to know that that's, that's, what I, that's what I think about you guys. And so, so my big question to you is, is you know, hey, what does spirit say to you about uh, where we're at right now? The coronavirus, um, you know, potential, you know, knock at the door by the military. You know, have you had your vaccine? Um, you know, where, where, what does spirit tell you right now with where, where with where we're at? I, uh, before I answer that question, I just ha wanted to uh, say a couple comments to, um, the, the first things that you were talking about there, because there, this conversation about what we're going through collectively is, is, a, is almost like, you know, a totally separate, long conversation. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to say that in uh, when working with a, a shamanic practitioner or a medicine person, uh, it's incredibly important to resonate with them, to understand what they've done in their own personal work. And it's um, for those folks who um, are really in service to the collective, um, it's important to, to really discern who is doing their personal work and is in truly in service and who is maybe not um on that path or is just you know maybe just studying it out of a out of an academic sense and so um when when my wife and i um when we track a client we always get 100 percent accurate information on that client's journey it's it's never wrong um because we are able uh, because of our deep personal commitment to being of service to the collective to our client when we meditate and having done years of clearing my own house um, I meditate I go into the infinite light field and I ask on behalf of the client their light body show me what can I bring back from the upper world to share with the client that will assist them in their journey and so the information always comes from the client to me not because of me but because i am humbly asking for help on behalf of the client that they are stuck with something and what can i share and what kind of interventions can i do and that's critically important because it's ultimately it's your soul it's the client's soul it's a, we're all one being ultimately the ultimate sense but we're like individual rays of the sun and each ray you know, if one ray can assist another ray on becoming clearer and brighter, that creates more unity. And so this is simply my ray of light communicating with your ray of light about what can bring more light. And so the information is always precise. It's always accurate. It's always beautiful. And it's always of uh, the assistance that you need at the time you need it. And so, you know, I... I all the clients that we're working with right now are working on the same thing that the collective is working on that we're all going through. And so that's, that's important. The, the discernment about who you work with, the, the type of medicine person you work with and sort of their energy is very important and um, their, their practices and process is important. So I would always interview and talk to people when, when we've, um, we've brought our own clients to people. We don't, we don't, we're not uh, ayahuasca practitioners, but we have clients that want to do ayahuasca and we have people that we work with that do that. And we, when, we, when we interview, my wife and I interview a practitioner in one of these plant medicines and they can be very, very valuable ceremonies. Uh, we ask those practitioners an hour or two of questions about 
their work, who have they trained with. You know, we want to understand who they are before we send anybody to them. Uh, that's super important. So um, I just, I, I want to make sure that it's, uh, clear that you trust your own intuition as a person up, uh, approaching medicine work, whether it be with plant medicine or any kind of ceremonies, and that you're very clear within yourself that this is the, I'm feeling good about working with this person. The other point I wanted to make is that, um, and I had to learn this, uh, I had to learn this so uh, intimately myself, and I, I started my journey, I was working in a corporate office 60, 80 hours a week, and spirit I, and I was like, I need help. I need out of here. <laughs> I had gone through um, a long prison incarceration uh, earlier in my life. And so when I ended up in a corporate job working all those hours, I realized that my 10 by 10 office cube was the same size as my 10 by 10 cell that I spent many, many years in. And it like, it, it blew my mind. And I was like, I got to change. And spirit was like, do start doing ceremony and do your yoga and your meditation and your chanting in your office cube. Like you don't awaken by going on a retreat and going to uh, running away from a monastery. You awaken where you're at. Mm -hmm. And so I had to deeply commit myself to these rituals. And when you take yourself out of the identified personal reality, and especially the third dimensional physical reality, and you take your issues into the mythic and into the ceremonial reality, that's like turning your brain off the intellect in your brain it's like you switch that off because that's interfering and you move into this other dimensional reality of ceremony and myth and if you understand your wound from this mythic perspective and you're able to do ceremony which is to say you ground it through doing fires and prayers and we i do there's things we bury in the ground there's things we burn there's things we do in the water there's nature paintings there's so many different rituals and ceremonies that we do in the phys in the in the nature physical nature reality um those are important because it's like it's like demonstrating to spirit that you're willing to show up to do something different and there have been so many times i literally had to do um spirit I was transmuting some of this energy that connected me to this corporate job. And it, it was a hook inside of me from my upbringing. And I, at one point was traveling uh, to my, I had traveled quite a bit from my work. I was traveling to and from constantly, but traveling in my full robes with my flutes and all my ceremonial stuff. And I would just, people would be waiting for a delayed plane. You, you can, you can, you can imagine the setup here. I'm in Chicago. Uh, crazy airport there's delays everywhere I would go up to the yoga studio in the Chicago rotunda and I would I would decompress there I'd meditate for a half an hour I'd get all my ceremonial stuff out and ready then I would I would play my flute all the way to the gate and then I would sit down I'd lay out my bells I'd lay out my mesa I would lay out all my ceremonial stuff I would sit down I'd roll I always travel with a goat skin I'd roll out my goat skin <laughs> I would sit down and I would sit there and meditate and I'd ring my bells and I'd do my ceremony to help me transmute the energy that I was feeling in the collective around me. And I would play my flute. And in the beginning, it was very scary to step out of a reality that we're all expected to participate in and to, and to enter a different reality. But through constant practice and becoming more and more comfortable with it, I became um, relaxed and, and easy about it. And then people started to come up and just thank me. They would be like, thank you so much for playing the flute at the, at the gate. Um, it feels so good. And occasionally I would get somebody angry. Um, they would, you know, say, stop playing. But you can, you can ignore those people. <laughs> you can just go, thank you. Okay. And I just moved over. You know, I just moved to the next, uh, next little open area. So um, don't take people's uncomfortableness personally. Just move to somewhere else. But you can ring a bell and do prayers and maybe um, put, put uh, your sacred water out and, or do whatever you are called to do. Um, and there will always be people that show up and come and say how much they appreciate the energy, the love, uh, the vibration you're bringing, right? Because you're, you're literally carrying a vibration inside yourself that is, say, that is transmitting peace, love, harmony, stillness. And when you transmit that vibration from yourself, the people who feel that vibration, they are so grateful that you're there transmitting. 
And, you know, I got to the point where I was traveling through the airport and uh, I traveled through Boston and a lot because uh, it's, it's the airport I fly in and out of. And the, even the TSA agents, towards the end of my job, I resigned um, last year, but towards the end, the TSA agents would, would see me show up to line. I'd be playing my flute and they would come over. They would walk my flutes around. They would, I never went through the scanner. They would always do a frisk down, but they got very comfortable giving me a frisk down. They would always ask me how I'm doing. They were so happy to see me. And when everyone else was having an experience of, of the security and being frustrated and angry and resentful and, ang you know, just like this intensity, I was walking through bowing, ringing my bells, and the, and the agents were even asking me to play the flute for them. And they were thanking me for being there. So what a shift in reality, right? Magic. But that's because it's because what the work I did in myself and that's where it starts. And then you do it here and then it transmits, you become a transmitter of it. And then everyone around you is able to see the change and, and experience a different vibration. And so that's, that's how the change is going to happen on this planet. It's not going to happen in the news. It's going to happen by us, us light warriors, us love warriors coming and bringing our unique, creative, uh, beautiful vibration, uh, bringing it out and letting it expand. Um, so the collective, yes, this is what the, this is the lesson and, that we're experiencing. I just, I just want to give you a little bit of a heads up. Um, we're on a time crunch here because I've okay, got, no problem. Yes, I've got a couple other things, and we can actually, we can actually bring this to Instagram uh, in the next twenty-four to forty-eight hours as well. So. Um, the recordings don't stop here. Okay, yes. Uh, the collective, yeah. So it's, it, I like someone said the other day, they said, uh, uh, welcome to the ayahuasca trip uh, of the collective. You know, it's, it's really, it's where, what we're witnessing now is the disillusionment of a very dense reality. Uh, I would call it uh, the capitalist slave uh, control system that's been in place on the planet for many, many years. Um, you know, there's a group of families and uh, individuals who have been sort of running things behind the scenes for many, many years. I think we're experiencing the collapse of that system. Um, there are benevolent forces working on behalf of the planet, and those forces are not working out in the open. They're working behind the scenes, but it will eventually come out in the open what um, is happening, and that e um, there's a, there's a very famous samurai movie. It's one of my favorites. It's called Yojimbo. And Yojimbo walks into this town and there's two groups of bandits and you know, kind of criminal gangs fighting it out. And he kind of plays these two gangs against each other. And ultimately they wipe each other out and they clear the town. And now the town is able to go forward and be free of these energies. And I, I essentially, this is kind of how I look at it. If you are the, you may... Uh, again, back to the I Ching, if you maintain personal integrity and sovereignty, that's the most important thing. Do not be swayed by any particular group or argument. Don't give your power away, but maintain personal integrity, personal sovereignty, take the upper perspective and allow these groups to, you know, fight themselves and kind of clear the playing field here on earth. And that is going to allow us to to expand forward with all of our guidance from the upper dimensions and from, you know, off world groups and everything that's waiting to help us. Everyone is like lined up to help humanity. Um, as soon as this clearing happens, it's going to be an amazing opportunity for us to build a planet that is whole, healthy, um, vibrant, and just a, this is the garden of paradise. It really is. When you go out and connect with nature, and you see the animals and the plants and you, and you feel the love of the Pachamama. It comes up through your feet. It hits your brain. It blows out all this negativity. Um, you start to understand the real potential of this planet and, and how much abundance is available for every being. Every single being, microbe on up. Um, you know, it's, it's truly an epic place to be and an exciting time for us to be alive, right? Every soul is here now, they chose it karmically to be part of this process. So you're, you're part of this process in transmuting this energy in your own personal self will help us collectively uh, go through the expansion process faster.
Awesome, man. That is awesome work. Um, I appreciate you coming on and, and uh, we'll get this recording out to the people. And where can people find more information about you? Woo, 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 woo. What happened? What happened? Did you freeze, bro? All right, we'll leave it in the description box.